Hi everyone, I'm John Kenneth Leibag Bawa from Raffles Institution, and this is my presentation for RoboCup Singapore Open 2020 under Co-Space Rescue U19. Let me introduce myself. I'm a member of my school's robotics club, Club Automatica, and prior to this, I took part in Virtual RoboCup Asia Pacific 2020 under the Rescue First Steps U19 category. Let me give a brief summary of the challenge. The main objective is for the robot to collect objects that spawn on the map and deposit them to score as many points as possible within the six minute time limit. The robot also has to avoid traps to prevent losing objects and avoid leaving the field as there's a 10 second time penalty. To tackle this challenge, I came up with a solution which consists of three main parts. Firstly, basic functions that enable the robot to navigate around the map while avoiding traps and obstacles. Secondly, targeted movement which enables the robot to move to a specific area on the map. And lastly, scoring mechanics, which enable the robot to collect and deposit objects in order to score points. The first part of the solution is basic functions, which involve the move, wall avoidance, and trap avoidance functions. Firstly, the move function enables the robot to navigate around the map at a certain speed and steering rate by controlling the values of wheel left and wheel right. For example, if the robot needs to turn anti-clockwise or towards the left, the value for wheel right must be higher than the value for wheel left. Next, the wall avoidance function enables the robot to avoid collisions with obstacles. The function is called when any of the ultrasonic sensors gives a low reading, meaning when the robot is near a wall and is about to collide with it. It calculates a proportional steering rate and the direction depends on which side the wall is on. For example, if the wall is on the left, the robot will steer towards the right. Finally, the trap avoidance function enables the robot to avoid traps ensuring that any objects collected are not lost and points are not deducted. The function is called when either of the color sensors detects the yellow warning surrounding the trap. The robot then rotates at a set steering rate away from the trap until the yellow warning is no longer detected. The second part of the solution is targeted movement, which involves routing and coordinate targeting. Firstly, the robot needs to decide which areas of the map to move into, so that it does not solely rely on random movement to score points. Since the map for the finals has zones dedicated to spawning each colored object, we can create a simple route for the robot to collect and deposit RRBBCC sets as shown by the red arrows. Now that the robot knows where to go, how does it actually move to where it wants to? The target angle is the heading the robot needs to move along in order to reach the target coordinate. For example, if the robot is targeting a coordinate directly to its left, the target angle will be 90 degrees. It then calculates the angular error of the current compass reading from the target angle and proportional steering is then used to turn the robot until it faces the target angle. However, since wall avoidance also produces a rotation, the resultant steering rate is calculated by taking a weighted sum of the steering rates from wall avoidance and coordinate targeting, with wall avoidance taking a higher priority. The last part of the solution is scoring mechanics, which involve the collect functions and the deposit function. The collect red, collect cyan, and collect black functions enable the robot to collect the different colored objects, the function is called when either of the color sensors detects the corresponding colored objects. It also keeps track of the number of objects of each color that the robot has collected, so that it will not pick up more than two of them. The deposit function is called when the robot has a full load, and it uses coordinate targeting to move towards the, ne the nearest deposit zone. When both color sensors detect the orange deposit zone, the speed and steering rate is set to zero, and the LED is set to flash for three seconds. In conclusion, when trying to implement new features into the program, I often encountered many bugs and errors that would cause the robot to behave in an unintended manner. In order to fix these issues, I had to use logical reasoning to break the problems apart into its individual components and piece together the most effective solutions. This usually involved testing the math and logic on a smaller scale and rewriting functions to remove unnecessary code. This competition provided a great platform for me to program with more complex obstacles, such as swamps, signal loss zones, and the lack of a boundary wall. These were challenges that I did not face in the first steps category, and hence I had to find new ways to approach the problem in order to get a high score. Thank you.